Yo, your favorite Tara Little Bacon Bear. I just want to say, I think I've only done one other sit-down interview in person since the pandemic ended. <laughs> You know, no, and really. I thought that you would be the perfect person oh, to break this seal. So I when I slid off in her DMs and she replied, I was like, yes. Oh my God. John Doe, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Bacon Beer. You know, you know, you know I was coming. Man, you know there's some coming. people that you gotta like personally tap on. Like you could go the other route, you could go through all the chain of command, but it's like I think that there's some people you gotta tap on personally because yeah. you gotta see them in real life. And I think after like the past year or two of seeing everything, it's like important to tap on your loved ones in person, lock yes, eyes with them, like, yes. like hold their hand, like, touch you know, you like touch them, head. touch them. So in the past two years, give me like an overarch right quick. Ooh, um, a lot of stuff happened, I guess, since the pandemic started. I'm kind of like one of those logical person, like I'm very ambitious. So as soon as the pandemic started, I was like, this is a good time for me. Like, really? I just, yeah, I mean, I feel like everybody was panicking, rightfully so. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to take the reality yeah. of the situation away, but I was like, I know I'm staying in the house. And since I'm staying <laughs> in the house, then I could just focus on the music. And I felt like it was a way for me to get ahead of everything. So I think that it was like a delicate balance. Like at first it was like, yeah, I got this. Don't worry, I'm, I'm in the house anyway. Right. I ain't got right, no right, problem right, being right. in the house. And then it was like, no. I, I'm trying to go outside just like right, a little bit, you right. know what I mean? You start getting stir crazy. You start getting sure. stir crazy, but then like also in the creative space, I got tired of trying to adapt. Like everything has been a damn adaptation of trying to figure it out. Right. How did you adapt in the musical space? Was that a hard transition or were you just still working in the house and cooking out things? Um, I was more in the studio than in the house. I guess when I wasn't in the studio, I was in the house just kind of working on my hobbies, which was... What are your hobbies? <laughs> I don't know what your hobbies are. <laughs> My hobbies are just like creating all type of stuff. So I do like visual art. I paint sometimes. I do a lot of like shooting random videos and editing them, putting them together like art, like collecting a lot of film oh, and footage and stuff. <laughs> like, so I don't know. I feel like that's why I say it feel like a good time for me because I'm like, dang, I can finally, I feel like it's more at a place for me to go out and be around people and be networking all the time and have to go to this party and dress up for that. So in a way, I kind of feel like getting back to myself. Mm. Um, but I also feel like the reality of things is like still there because aside from COVID or like people getting COVID, it's like real life continues to happen and you're in your own cocoon. And yeah. also I had just moved to LA the year before in 2019. So. I was okay. away from home. I was away from everything. Um, and it, I guess that was the hardest thing for me to adapt to. I think that definitely speaking to the COVID point, I think that we all had to like adapt and shift, but also to like life still goes on. Mm -hmm. Even in this, like if you didn't lose a loved one to COVID, you might've lost them to gun violence. You lost them to exactly. uh, domestic violence. You lost them to a car accident. You lost them to whatever the case may be. And it was like, so not only am I getting my life, my ass kicked by life, but life is also kicking my ass from over right. here in this other way. But it's just and like there was no funerals that first year. It was no funerals. It was no view. It was no coming together at all. No. So that was also super hard. I think it made the suffering just a little bit worse, just because it was like you had to really internalize these things. You had to sit with your own feelings, and where you would lean on your aunties and uncles and be a part of it, be present. It was a lot harder to be present. I think I found that for myself right. in my own family life. But we make it. Right. I will you say, on a positive note, I really like this, I don't know how to describe it, this real womanhood shit that you've really been <laughs> on. Like, this, this shaping of this, I don't want to say video vixen, but you really getting in your, your woman bag type shit. Like, what is this Thank about? Thank you. That's so, I'll just, It's intentional. It's that, so intentional. It is intentional, and I love you for saying that because I feel like... Um, even my makeup artist I have with me on tour right now, like she was, t we were talking about that too, because when she first met me, I was like 18 or 19. So I had went through a lot of stuff just in my personal life where it was hard for me to kind of like own any type of sexuality, any type of sensuality. Like I just kind of hid behind everything. So I guess being in the pandemic, being with myself, I started really thinking about you know what 
kind of artist do I want to be? Like, mm. what do I want to speak to with this next project that I was working on? And I didn't even know it was going to be a project yet, but um, I guess that that was my goal. Like, I wanted to be intentional, and I am grown, and I've been grown. You feel me? <laughs> so, no, in a way, it's like, grown I, herb, I grown earn herb. this. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm kind of, I guess we are the same age, and it's like we at the age where we're, like, I could speak for myself, but I know you understand what I'm saying. Like, you kind of understand what all the older women were always saying. And Man. I'm like, it's not that I didn't believe you. Yeah. I just didn't know what you were talking about. And I now did, I'm I like, didn't get it. Now I get it. <laughs> now I get it. And I'm like, damn. Okay. So it's like, it's like the duality of the situation. Like, I know that I'm at a certain stage in my life and I earned the right to just be comfortable, comfortable in my skin, to look good, to feel good. There's a couple of things I want to speak to. I think, like, for myself, when I was starting to become a DJ, I felt like on some level that I needed to to cover myself, right. like, so that niggas would leave me alone. Right. Does that make sense? No, I, no, I don't no. even know how to say it. It like, definitely makes sense. If you wear a hoodie, sense. they ain't going to be bothering Right. Me. But when I realized that whether I was wearing a hoodie, it didn't matter. Right. And when I showed up in the leggings, it still didn't matter. And if I showed up in a swimsuit top, it right. still didn't matter. Right. It was just like... Wow, the pandemic allowed me to like really embrace those things and get comfortable with seeing myself in different lights. You know what I mean? And because also, you can't always do that in a public light. Cause you yeah. like, damn, what if these lashes don't look good today? Right. If they can see me with these lashes like this, I like it. You know? It's also like at this age too. It don't matter what I decide to wear, because when I step out this house, respect me. Or it's gonna be a problem. So I'm at that age too, where I'm just like. I be in the house, you know, you be getting dressed like, damn, this going, they going to be looking at me. They going to be, they gonna be looking. And then I be like, yeah, and they should look. It Bitch, should. I look good, and you better not touch me. You better not speak to me crazy. But it's like, and it's getting comfortable. You got to get comfortable yeah, in that yeah, space. Yeah. And, like, I don't yeah. think, I think a lot of young ladies, like, you really come over that uncomfortable hill in middle school, early high school, where it's yeah. like, your eyebrows might still be too thin, and your boobs are still coming in, right. and it's all still shaping together. And, like, especially in a world now where we got all these BBLs, and the internet is really telling yeah. you, you got to yeah. look like Jada Chiefs, which is definitely my girl. And <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to look like Jada that too. I'm trying to look like Jada Wayna too. She is beautiful. That, she is gorgeous. You know, but like in a world like that, like mm -hmm. I could not imagine being in high school at that point and trying to shape myself in that right. way. It's and, scary. I have younger sisters. I think about that all the time, how pressure we are to like edit. To That's why I'm like, I make a point, like I'm intentional with any retouching. I don't let people over retouch me or make me look like I'm not, I don't look like in real life. But that stuff is scary, and that's a different generation. And even without having that much of a pressure when we were coming up, because I remember when I had an Instagram in high school, I didn't feel the pressure of, like, looking a certain way, even though I was an artist, mm -hmm. until I, I think I got to, I think I got to, like, 19 or something i got a comment that was like damn your girl look rough and i was like oh <laughs> make your stomach hurt for a second I'm like oh that's a jazz that's personal I'm sitting at home looking regular but that's when i started realizing that people expected me to look a certain way because of i guess my resume your, your you profession know your shape. they're like oh if you do this then you should look like this so that was my first experience with that and then that was at the back of my head but like you said it takes getting comfortable and um, creating those safe spaces, I guess. Tell me about shaping your voice then on like um, things like that. It can be easy to like get a, somebody get your order wrong. You're like, no, no, it's okay. I don't need you to fix it. <laughs> but people be needing to really stand up for their shit and say like, no, I don't want that retouch. I don't want to look like that. I don't want my set to look like this. I don't like the way that I sound. Like finding that voice, not everybody is that vocal. Right. How did you find that for you? I guess uh, not everybody is that vocal. I, I, like I said, I have younger sisters. They're not as vocal as me. Like. Two of my sisters are very shy. So, like, I think coming from Chicago, being raised in the city, like, in the hood, <laughs> you're already going to encounter people who are going to try you. It's not going to be serious. Sometimes it is serious. Sometimes it's not. But they're just going to pull your card a little bit, and you got to be ready. You got to be quick. Like, it or, builds character. Or, right, or you're going to get ate up. So, like, I guess from a little kid, I just always knew how to give people a little bit of pushback. And I don't think that really went away. So even early on in my career, it probably was worse. So now for me, as I get older, it's about fine tuning it to still being respectful, still being professional, but letting people know, like, please don't play with me. Now you are very, I, I will say, like, you're a, a person, especially in the Internet space that I see is, like, very intentional about the way that they shape 
their narrative. You know what I mean? Right, getting, right. Contr- getting in control of those things. It's like mm-hmm. you said it once. And that's it. And that's right. Because I, I was about to say, it ain't going to be too much. But it hasn't up. always been that way. It hasn't always been that way. Like, what, what encouraged that growth in you and what really settled you into that space? Um, There are some real reasons. I guess I won't get into. But I will dive. say, I, I will say, just, like, realizing that every, like, you know it, but until you see it, like, every action has a reaction. Ooh. So even if I'm in the right, and I had this conversation with my grandma, and I had this conversation with my OGs. Like, even if I'm in the right, like, what I say is going to be like a domino effect. I'm going to have an impact on the situation. Yeah. And knowing that I have a platform. You be pl- giving so much more energy to things that you know what so I mean? much smaller. You have to pick your battles. So, like, that's when I realized, like, it's a time and a place, even if I'm in the right. You know what I mean? Because, like, if I just could go off of that, I would just smack everybody that had me messed up. But, I'm like, I'm understanding that's not always the way. I don't always have to say it. So it's a pra- it's a daily practice. That's what we call tact. And that's, like, maturity, and that's just being artful. And you're, you're absolutely correct. Like, I think that the Internet also gives a lot of people the power to feel like that that they are a lot bigger than they are a lot of the time. It's like, no, no, wait, 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 wait. Yeah. Because it don't be that off the internet. It don't be that off the internet. It definitely so. is not. And that's why I'm like, majority of my frustration comes from when I'm having these conversations on my platform with people that I really know. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's where most of my energy comes from, where it's like, I can see you <laughs> in I can person. Touch you. We can, can touch each can other. Touch, can we can breathe each right. other's air and th- have the same conversation, and this won't be how it goes. So let's keep it realistic when you're talking to me. That's just how I be coming. I, I'm all about my fa- one of my favorite words is tact. Like how you get to the end result is true, but also like two things can be true at once. Like you realize that in all the yelling and all the hullabaloo that you got going on, it's like actually I could just be quiet and I could still be right. Like, exactly. Be still exactly. Just as right. But that's something that has really come in age for me. Like mm-hmm. it's taking me a little bit, and I still fuck that up. I still fuck it up, but you still try every day. Right. It's a daily practice for sure. I think. Um, Mm-hmm. I feel like as of late, I've been watching a lot of interviewers fumble shit. How about that? I just <laughs> I just want to jump off that. And I stand on both sides of the fence with them because obviously I'm an interviewer, but right. also like you like a human that still fucks things up. Right. As an artist, what do you want to see interviewers do better? Um. Well, I feel like with any interview that has a platform, they always feel like they have to have an approach. So... I feel like for most interviewers, I understand that when most people choose to be professional for the most part, that they can choose not to do that all the way and they know that it will garner a different type of attention. So I'm aware of that in interviews, which is why I mostly don't do interviews. I know, I was about to get there. I was going to say, you don't do these. You know, like I said, you and my girl would have been here whether we was doing an interview or not. But, um, like, people, people have that right to make those choices so that i don't put too much on but i like i said every action has a reaction you interview the wrong person you're gonna get the wrong type of reaction but i do want to see first and foremost no matter what the approach is i want to see interviewers that know the artist that they're interviewing Mm -hmm. too many interviewers feel like oh you're coming on my platform like i'm giving you I'm giving you, I'm putting uh, you on. Uh, what do they call it, exposure. Yeah. But it's like, does the exposure matter if you're not even telling your audience why they should be paying attention to me? Because mm. at that point, it's just so transactional. <laughs> so, like, off bat, I feel like interviewers need to know your music. They need to know who the artist is. They need to know what your career is like. They need to know so that they can ask questions that the audience may want to hear or that will make them interested in the person that they're interviewing. And also... Um, just <laughs> I'm taking all your notes. nah, but I feel like I feel like you do well, and I I feel like I like I said, even though I rock with you, like I wouldn't have done the interview if I seen all your interviews and they was like messy or just all over the place. You know what no, I mean? Like, listen, like you said, I'm here to be a liaison between the people and the artists, and that's really just what the best part of it is. And yeah. if you get messy there in the middle, well, shit. But, yeah. you know, for the most part, it's on the positive tip. You have so many accomplishments that are worth celebrating, and we could stay down in the mud if we want to, but we ain't got to. <laughs> right. Um, I, like the, I, like the, I like the questions to be good, you know? We like 
like a good question. I don't even want to come to the interview. They go, what inspires you? And what are your so five-year your three, goals? Your, who are your three inspirations? Like, the same questions every time. It's like, no point in doing that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I definitely get there. But, I, you know, I want to see more young artists really take claim over their their voice. Mm. You know what I mean? I think a, lo- a lot of young, you're an artist that has been around for a little bit, so you've had like a little bit of time in the gauntlet to really get some some on for you. Right. You, know what you. You know what you're doing. Right. What advice would you offer to another artist that is still trying to navigate that space? Because I see a lot of, I don't want to say, a lot of the young times be fumbling it. I met some little nigga the other day, and he was he was like, "Oh, you the radio girl?" I said, "Baby, get the crust from right. your mouth. Let me, let me help you out, young man. You know." Uh-uh. And it's things like that, and it's like you, you, I see that, and I want our next generation to do better, and I want the next generation of young girls to like really come in here stepping on shit, so that when yeah. they sit down, they can do that right. What advice would you offer? Well, I think, I think like. Like you said, I've been doing this for a little bit, so I kind of came in between. I feel like as a old, as a middle millennial, <laughs> it's like I came in between the no social media mm-hmm. and the like social media heavy generation. Yay. So like social media came in, well, like into my high school years, really. Same. So like, I want to. I feel like these industries and these labels are not going to going to promote. Um, development they're not going to promote actually Mm. like sharpening your tools and sharpening your sword like they're not going to tell you to that you can do better and you can be better they're just going to tell you to keep putting out content so that it hits so that it garners views so that it garners numbers yeah Um, because the money makes machine so they can make money off of you so my advice to artists would to be like no matter how long it takes if it's what you really want is gonna matter more for you to develop your craft because even for every viral sensation, every five years there are maybe four standouts that yeah. still have they, a they career. They continue that's on going. the roster. Like the Lizzo's and the Anderson Pecks and um, Cardi B and Meg the Stallion and SZA, like Summer Walker, like those are people that were you didn't hear of them, but every time you heard them, they were developing their sound more to the fact somebody who saw their potential was able to come in, even the city girls. Like, you, we watched the city girls become better and better and better. Like, you, you, you're right on the money on that, but I think that there's like a lot of artists that, that come and go. Like, there are artists that I say, reps have walked into the radio station be like, man, this is going to be the biggest mm-hmm. guy ever. You need to watch out for him. And then I'll ever see, see or hear another right. song. I can't but name every, another Every you know executive I mean? is going to tell exactly. you. Exactly. The, every They're going like, to say that about the next every star, single the one. Next one. Anyone they already swiped, uh, wrote the check for, they're going to say that. And that. But the scariest part is that I, when I don't see them again, but I'll, I'll see SZA again or you see Cardi B again. Mm-hmm. I, I worry about the, say, the mental state of that artist that has realized that they're falling down on that roster because, because you, quite, you literally are in competition with your label mates, if I understand it correctly. You are with the executive people, but those people don't matter because all the people you named were people were chosen by the people. Yeah, their the fame. Shame. Lizzo got the, that number one off the people. Like her label was definitely pushing her, but yeah. Lizzo got that number one because the people was listening to her and they was like, "She deserved this. We gonna get her this number one." You know what? Artists now, I think they understand the power of the people because it's yeah. like the the people can also cancel you, but exactly. they can also bring you to the forefront. But that's what I'm saying. The people don't always know what's best. That's why you have to be developing your own talent Ooh. because. That, like I said, it's always going to be a viral sensation. And people are like, this is hot. And it was hot. But <laughs> they don't know that you can't do it again. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do it again. Because you don't know what you did the first time. And that's the Because you, you was guessing. You was making it up. You was, was making it up. You trying shit. That's why you develop your shit, you know? What does development look like for you? And how do you shape yourself? Um, well, I'll take, I'll take this mental note from Saba. Uh, but... He's just one of those people that taught me to just, like, put it out. Because, like, even with part of developing my own stuff is, like, there's a lot of perfectionism that's a part of it. Mm -hmm. But the part, the releasing part is, like, kind of graduating that type of thought process, if you understand what I'm saying. like So even though I know I could be better, it's, like, I won't know how I could be better until I close this little chapter. So, like, every time I'm making a project, 
before I'm finishing the project, I'm listening to the last project. And it's after I've taken a year from listening to it. And Just because you got to get it off. You got to get exactly. it off. Exactly. Report back. Come to it fresh. And now you're like, oh, now I can hear what I wasn't doing before. That's why this new stuff sounds different. That's why when I changed, when I made this little tweak, when I stopped trying to fit so many words into this mm. part of the song, when I stopped thinking so much about the structure of it, like the more experience you have, you building, making stuff and like dissecting and taking it apart and trying to make it better. It's just like, you don't get, you don't get better until you put the time in. Like that's the only way. In 10,000 hours. <laughs> 10, it's, and it's not 10,000 hours. That's what they don't really? tell you. It's 100,000. Oh, like I was going to say it's less than that. <laughs> okay, 100,000 hours. 5,000? No, it's about 100,000. I really count it all the years. Really? I, not count it, but like I but looked it up. It. Like how many hours in the last 10 years I've been working on this stuff? It's about 100,000 hours I put in, in to get in this far. What form of genre are we getting at like most wanted? Who is that girl now? Like, where is she? Because I know you said you moved on from that because you I become did. somebody else, but who is she now? Well, was she then? When I made Most Wanted, I didn't even know that I was making Most Wanted. And, <laughs> and, and that's what we were saying earlier. It's like, when people do something really well, they don't know what they're doing. Like, that's not mm. necessarily a bad thing. Like, okay. sometimes you got to kind of be just mindlessly creating. But, like, I was just making a lot of singles, and the plan was to just drop singles to... I was on like the money, like not the money, the numbers, like the number okay. game. I was like, I really want to build my platform, which is was my goal. So I was like, I just got to make more music to put out. So I was making all these songs. I see. And then, you know, my manager was like, you should drop an EP. And I was like, no, nah, I'm not dropping an EP. I don't want to drop an EP. And then as the years, as the months was going by, and my plan to drop a song every month was just everything was taking longer because mixing how it goes. is a whole different story. So at that point, I'm like, okay, I think I'm going to drop an EP. So I started thinking about what I would name the EP. And I was trying to think about where I was in my life. Like I had gotten out of a relationship. Like, like you know, you get you have a breakup and you have that period after the breakup where you know, you just get, you got to get your, you got to get your sea legs. You got to yeah. plant your feet again. <laughs> like, <laughs> so when I was making all these singles, I just noticed a thread between all of the songs that were tying back to like finding myself again and mm -hmm. my independence and what I liked about myself and what I wanted and what I was settling for before. Ooh. So like even the, how I'm looking at my music where I'm like, Oh, let me go back to the project I put out last year. Like, I, I'm just, it just so happens as an artist, where I was at in life is tied up into those songs. So, through going back and listening to that and listening to where I was in life, I'm like, not only do I want to be a better artist, but it's like, I want to be a better, better woman, woman. And I have to be better to myself to start doing that. So, that's the girl I was with Most Wanted. Like, it was about being like owning taken into ownership like I am that bitch <laughs> not I am that <laughs> I bitch. really am I mean Beyonce did that with I am Sasha Fierce like she had to give herself that alter ego to be like yeah all the stuff that y'all saying because I'm a, a goat like that's me it you is I mean? it, it I is am. and it I is. am that <laughs> speaking of niggas I feel like I love that you said like I feel like kind of after a nigga, after a new nigga or a disappearance of one or a return of another, it's like you got to get your sea legs or your bearings about you. Do you think that that has like a big effect on your music? Like when they come and go, do they inspire you or do, you, do they take away? Well, let's just keep it clear. I don't have niggas coming and going. Like okay. I, really, I really rarely get locked in with the person. Mm -hmm. And my people can attest that I've been in, I'm 27, I've been in two relationships in the first Two was literally before I turned 21. So okay. my last relationship was like my last, damn near my first and my last well, almost. I mean, so what you gonna do? So what's what's just, the plan? What's the vision? Cause that's, that's really rare. Not gonna lie, it's real rare. It's not, I guess I'm just like super guarded. I, and I never been a relationship based person. Like I enjoy company, but I never been like, people, men do not believe me. They be like, ah, oh, you don't. I'm like, yeah, I guess. But, it's cause you pretty as hell. Yeah. Like, I mean, come on. <laughs> Well, just that's not all of it, though. It's just and and part of most wanted too is it was about saying how even being that bitch, like a man will still play with you. You feel what I'm saying? 
I don't mean, think. we are. I don't. It's like, it's I don't like, need it's to like go once through you it. know I'm that bitch, you want to play with me more. Or exactly. Something. I don't, know. I don't, know I don't need is. to go through it ten times to understand that a nigga gonna play with you every single time. So after that, after I got went through that, and I think I've been through a lot of stuff in my personal life that's not relationships where, like, or I would say romantic relationships where a lot of people let me down. So yeah, <clears throat> I think I don't give people the opportunity a lot of the time to do that well i mean to the point of like how we talked about what our elders would encourage of us i feel like some of my aunties they wish that they could go back and be a lot more open with men they they really went on that hard on that i hate niggas thing and now you ain't got no kids and you 50 plus and you, right. you gotta sad but a i don't bit. but i don't hate niggas but uh, um, a man will have yeah. to prove himself to me, period. Ooh, prove yourself. Period. What does proving yourself to, to you look like? And I ask you that because I've been kind of summarizing this idea that, like, it's either two ways you can provide for me. It's either you provide for me financially or you provide for me emotionally. Mm. And somewhere in that niggas be missing either one of them <laughs> points. And so when I, when I simplify it to those two things... Maybe getting it wrong, sir. Like, oh, man, am I thinking of it wrong? Am I'm I not it wrong? simplifying nothing for nobody. You is smart, and I know you're smart. Oh, no, I'm not better. sure they smart, though. Uh, I thought so, too. And as the thing is, the thing is, though, the thing is, though, some of these men obviously are not smart sure. at all. <laughs> uh, but sure. some of these men are, and they are acting like they don't know what's going on. And they Facts. do. So I guess, like, a man proving himself to me is like, here. here's the way I see it. Like, I think very logically, like, human relation, being intimate with people, being involved with people is just not rare at all. Like, okay, you're going to like people. I always tell my, like, younger girlfriends, like, yeah. you can like a nigga, but will you keep liking him is the question. It, it, is so do, a, don't put thing? all your eggs in this basket For if sure. you're going to get off the nigga, be cool on him in, like, two, three months, and now you feel like you told him you the love of my life and all this stuff. So it's like... <sighs> Men will love the idea of you for a very long time. Oh, yeah. Man. They'd be obsessed with the idea. Like, man, I can't. I hate. Yeah. You know what I hate secretly? Like, when a nigga be like, man, I could wait to get you. That kind of shit make me want to run to the hills. No, like, no, like, you uh, you uh, can't uh. be wanting this before I wanted this. Because no. how long are you planning for that? I, I like you can't a, wait too long. I like a dude that be liking the shadows a little bit. Depending on what the circumstance is. Yeah, but see, that's what I'm saying. Like, you plotting on my shit. You laying up at night like, ooh, when I get her. Mm, I guess. That kind of screw. But, that, but the, if he proves. If a man prove himself to you, then, but he gotta I, prove himself. Like I said, like because you know when girls say, "Oh, a man, you know, he always coming back and da da da." It's like oh. the man love the idea of you when he not around you. Of course, he's gonna be like, "Oh, I miss you, da da da." You don't miss, but when you around me, it's like we can't stand each other. Can I be honest? You're not come to reality with this situation. Young me and young women just have to get over the idea, like, "Oh, he came back." They always come back. That's right. like one rule my mom taught me. She's like, no matter how long it's been, they always come back. I don't back. care about and whether who they want, whether back. they want them to, but they always come Let back. Let me look at the camera when I say this. I don't care about who coming back. I care about who's staying. Okay. Ooh. Who ain't leaving. Who, but you gotta let them stay. What you mean, let them stay? Ooh. I ain't what? I ain't. Let, I'm letting a nigga live free will like God intended. So if you stay, that's your choice. If you leave, that's your choice. But I like, I, I, I like I, that. I'm I'm a I'm a domesticated ass woman, okay? Cause I cook, I clean, <laughs> I sit in the house. I don't. I'm boring. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, when I am in that situation, I know that I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be a great person, and I'm I'm open. It's not like I'm only in relationship with or open to relationships with just me and like. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yesterday, but I'm a, I'm gonna be a good partner regardless. So I'm just like a that's my favorite really term, come partner. Through. I like a partner. <laughs> I like a partner. I um put in my Instagram story yesterday. Somebody was like, "You ever kiss one of your girl best friends?" And I, I asked my stories like, "What y'all think?" Tell me what y'all think. Like they voted that I did, and I ain't gonna confirm or deny. But I just was like, "Damn, I, I really give, am I giving? Am I giving out the gay vibes?" You am know, I you, the you already vibes? told them you wearing the big boy clothes, um, so they don't look at you. So I did. I don't you know. On your no, no. I, I can't see. I can't see it all the way through. But I don't like to count myself out of a lot of things. Life is really too short to say what you won't do. Because you'd be like, "Man, I would never," and then look at your ass. Right. Doing it. Um, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I kind of desire that. I kind of, I feel like I'd be involved with people that's like kind of in similar industries to me. Mm -hmm. And it's just being two busy people is just very hard. It's just hard. Like it's yeah, great like, because the person's like 
financially stable and everything. And like it's hard to be you busy and I'm busy and we busy like all the time. But it's like worse when he's like, so not, studios how long? And, and tour is where? Right, you know what right, I mean? Right. Ask all these dumbass questions because this isn't not. your walk in life. Your walk in life. Do you like teaching them? Would you like teaching them? Like, listen, baby, this is what this look like. That's the interface. I just over like there. a real one you're not going to have to teach. It's like, I Ooh. know my lifestyle is different from yours. You hit me up when you got time. So a ready like, made nigga. Okay. A ready okay. made nigga. There's something out there. Okay. <laughs> What does, I feel like um, I've been seeing this on Twitter all week long, and I feel like you're kind of embracing this. They call it a soft life. Like, soft life. Soft life, which is like black women embracing luxury and enjoying nice things. And I feel like I they always nice got black thing. women embracing something. Yeah, yeah. I, again, yeah. The, I didn't know that this was a term, like us enjoying ourselves, but I do feel like over the pandemic, like there's been like a, a resurgence of women to be like, yeah, skin skincare, and yeah, makeup, and my yeah, thing long is, trips. When have black women not been soft? My grandma soft, my great grandma You think so? Soft. What you talking about? My, my grandma drink pure raw aloe vera every day. Her skin looks amazing. You know, I know some rough and done, tough women. Pedicure. I know rough and tough. I know I both. Like those both. people have their self taken away from them, <laughs> if that makes sense. So I feel like when we, I'm all about that, first of all. I'm a tourist. So I don't know if that matters. But, oh, you know, I'm okay. a tourist. So I'm I know like, tourist guys. I'm domesticated. I like to be in the house. I like to be comfortable. I like everybody around me to be comfortable. Um, but I feel like terms like that, like soft life and black women and luxury, my thing is like, I don't, I don't think that black women shouldn't have that, but I think the issue for me is how many, the type of black women that don't have access to it. Yeah. It's like if you already live in this luxurious lifestyle and you just go on a vacation once a year, it's like, yeah, power to you. I don't need to read a, a paper on that. And it's nice to watch on TikTok and everything. Yeah. But, you know, when I, I'm going on my first real vacation this year, and I'm also taking my grandparents on their first cool. trip out of the, the city. So, like, you know, I feel like that's how I like to do it. It's like soft that's for me, luxury. soft for you. That's real luxury. It's like yeah. giving luxury to somebody who needs it more than I do. Yeah, Especially absolutely people have been on earth longer than we have. You're absolutely correct. It's like, and especially if you can if you can show your little nieces and your nephews kind of shit like that. How to do it. That is so, that's so much more important to me than it looking like that for me. It's like, embrace the soft life to me is like, claiming my own luxury, but also finding luxury for other people. You just like, for example, let's say like, niggas on food stamps shouldn't have steaks. Why are you eating lobsters? Cause you broke, so why are you smoking cigarettes if you ain't got no more? It's like, bro, just because you're poor does not mean that you don't get exactly. to have luxurious things all, that you get to enjoy. Like, we not on. eating lobster in my house unless it was paid for with food stamps. Ah, oh, so, so check out. <laughs> self check out saying, we don't even need to worry about the stamps. That's who is, the market price is crazy. I live in LA. I'm just saying, play with crab them. is different out here y'all check got that them steps? i'm just saying okay <laughs> but i mean i just i really i love that for us but like you said i feel like there's like a, a barrier and a boundary like soft life right. only looks like soft life for some women but we need to get that for all women right. like i need that for all of us mm. um these days what does self-care look like for you and taking care of you look like mm, saying no Ooh. do not disturb <laughs> i need to do that okay <laughs> do not disturb all day all day and all night um i got a list of people who can get in contact with me no matter what everybody else gonna do not disturb do you find that it's easy for yourself uh for you to set boundaries because i struggle with i think i struggle with placing boundaries with people i'm like i could i could come for like 30 minutes i might be able to go but like you know what i mean i think i don't know i feel like i'm in the middle because i understand people that are it's hard for you to set boundaries i think for me it's hard for me to set boundaries with people that I've just known for so long. Yeah. Because you just get so comfortable, especially like family and everything, they get so comfortable with just always having access to you. Then once you have to set that boundary as an adult, it's kind of awkward because it's like, I never had to talk to my auntie, like I never had to talk to my cousin <laughs> like this. Like, okay, don't ask me for nothing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. stuff like that. Um, but for the most part, I feel like I come from a reasonable 
group of people. So it's not that hard. Do you think that the family dynamic of things has changed for you with fame a little bit? Because I'm not even on, on, but like I think it's it gets, changed a little bit. It gets a little bit weird. I mean, you suddenly buying birthday cakes and niggas wasn't asking for that before. Like right. my nephew asked for a headset, an Oculus. It was like, so you don't want like a book? They be asking for crazy stuff. Like, where did you get that from? Nah, they they definitely be getting a little crazy. The kids are always gonna be crazy. Yeah, they, but kids, you gotta do that for them. You gotta do it. You gotta be the cool. insane, you know. And I do have to be the cool auntie, the cool cousin, the for cool sure. sister. Um, but I don't think I don't think the dynamics have changed. Mostly, my family always tells me that like I'm super humble and everything, and that they love that about me. And I just try to, I just stay focused on like what really matters. Um. I will say it's just, it's getting harder for me, like, it's just, like, I feel like all of the pressure comes from just from myself, just because I'm just not used to, <laughs> I'm not used to having, like, more money, I'm not used to, you know, people caring about what I do, yeah. what I post. Looking for you, thinking about you. What I tweet, yeah. <laughs> people caring about who I date, what I, you know what I mean? Like, I'm just not used to that, so it's just very, it's, that's what's awkward for me. Well, as you get used to it, I'm sure you're still, like you said, you're a creative person. You still have to find some outlet and some space for that. What is that shaping up to look like now? Like, what are you putting that into? Because um, I know you're thinking forward. I know you're thinking forward. Yes, 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 yes. I think, uh, well, first of all, Most Wanted came out. Most Wanted Deluxe is coming out. Deluxe! Yes. Is it going to be more tracks like remixes? or? Um, we, try, we tried to finish this remix. We can't get it, but okay. it's two new songs. It's a feature and one other bonus song, and then all of the songs got remastered. Cause Love that. I was on my Kanye. Kanye really inspired me with Donda. Like, I was like, I'm I'm that shit back I ain't again. done with my shit either. Actually, we wasn't done, so we went back and finished some stuff. Um, so I'm really excited about that. And then I'm really, I got on TikTok this year. I'm still trying. I'm fighting it. I'm it's really hard. fighting it because I don't want to be kinda, scrolling. I don't want to be. I don't want to. I, I don't want to get stuck in a it's, hole. It's kind of easy to fall off on there too, because like if you're not consistently Consistent. posting, and I'm bad at that. So, um, I, I fuck with TikTok though. They really like me on there. So now I've been trying to, I've been trying to put more into not TikTok but creating content and like. Showing my sense of humor a little bit. Yeah, I was like, going to say, you got a funny side. So it's like your TikTok, like you being goofy as hell? Yeah. I mean, I mean it's like my my version of being goofy as hell. But people will be recognizing me in the street <laughs> off TikTok now. And they have really? no idea I'm an artist. I'm like, that's terrible. <laughs> well, now like you can bring those things full. You can bring them full circle. Yeah, so like, that's oh, what I'm working on right now. That's what I was saying. Yeah. That's perfect. Because if you sell them one thing, you can sell them another right. thing. They're like, oh, wait, she can sing too. I, oh, right. For real. You know, so. We just shot some, uh, when we was in Atlanta, because we on tour right now, but we just shot some uh, promotional skits in Atlanta for the deluxe. And they are fucking hilarious. And I wrote them. Me and my homie uh, wrote both of them. And then we had two of the funniest people be in them and they just there's a lot of it. funny people in atlanta so i don't want to go it like, was so it was so good i can't wait to post that shit i'm excited for it i'm excited for a deluxe for you um past tour well how many stop how many stops are is this tour it's nine stops here and then i have three mm -hmm. headliners in june okay and how far into this tour are you this one at this point we have five shows left so we did our first so you just tour. you halfway there yeah we halfway through yeah okay so what energy are you gonna give dc because we like an r&b city we really are about our women and like that kind of shit the women so. here are so beautiful and y'all love a good vibe and i actually all 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 of the shows i've been feeling like they've been a little too slow because i the thing about most wanted is like i love most wanted but mm -hmm. when i play r&b it's like when i perform I'm doing all R&B, so it's just, like, so slow to me because I'll be ready to turn up. But okay. I'm like, D.C. is the perfect place that I'm going to You can give them both. I think D.C. would embrace both because we like a little turn up, yeah. a little rowdy. We always turn up, though, at the end of the day. I just always felt like it was too much R&B in the beginning. But I feel like tonight they really going to be able to appreciate it. Since you are, I don't want to say, like, uh, since you are a perfectionist of things, what has touring been like for you? Is it easy adapting every single night to get, like, this is where I'm at. This is my space. Don't orient yourself. Is it easy? I guess the hardest part is, like, I really haven't performed live before this tour in, like, two years really? since the pandemic. Yeah, I yeah, I yeah. Once, okay. or actually twice in the whole pandemic okay. at a live show. So that was the hardest thing in, like, getting back on stage. But I've been on tour a few times, so I'm still pretty comfortable. I am pretty hard on myself, like, 
the team know after the show they'll be like oh you dig i'm like that shit was weak <laughs> i was like i did not like that but or sometimes i know when i I had a good show but um that's part of the development and i'm opening on this tour too so i'm like i'm kind of just practicing for my headliners next month so i can really really do a, do what does headlining good. look like to you what's your what's your vision this is my first time, so I don't even think I have a vision. I'm just like, whatever y'all got for me, I'ma appreciate. Okay. Do you got your looks together? Cause like I said, you've been on your real you've been on your I've vision been, fashion shit right I got now. My team's strong right now. Um, we don't have the fits yet for the headliner. Okay. I think I'm still like I'm like in between eras because it's like everybody is learning about most wanted, but we already started working on the next one. You project. into something else. So I'm like, I don't really know how I want to come uh, style-wise, but I've been trying to be disciplined and stay in the era that niggas know. So I've been staying on my second <laughs> video vixen, kind of cute little uh, housewife. No, I like it for you. It looks really good on you. What was it? Uh, you trying to fight the BBL? Uh, yeah, right I am now. fighting the BBL. I mean, cause you, get, you get thickness in all the right yeah. places. I'm just saying, you know, it's, it's hard to fight those. The thing is, I still have a good, like, and it's not like a good, it's just like a little something, but it's like, I ain't got no BBL body. I don't know why they keep throwing, they be, they be coming down hard. They just see comments. ass. All they saw was ass. They be like, who is the doctor? Like, they be coming down hard on me. I'm like, I promise y'all, it ain't I ain't even balling like that I just started getting money like <laughs> yesterday I don't even know why they think I got it like listen that. but it's not that hard they got like specials now you can get your ass done for like less right, than 5k like be out, you could be out in like the it's like the fix week. a flat they just I'm put a little pump in there you, throw a little air in your ass they, and they turn around and there ain't no recovery time it's like so you got your ass I'm like, you me up and you me up at the club the I next shit day. you not I've seen people that have literally been out the same week and it's like so for real you can mm -mm, sit down mm -mm. like no I still got my fascia on it's like oh you got your fascia on <laughs> You got your fascia on? I ain't never had one of those. You man. know, I'm still standing strong. I'm still, I'm really holding right. on. To, I'm, I'm really holding. <laughs> like, but I feel like right now, if I got like some any type of work done, that it would it would break yeah, the damn obvious. internet. Yes. She got a new ass. Right. And I don't want nobody pointing out my new ass. If I got a new ass, you guys like, don't look at my <laughs> new ass. Like, straight straight. Up, like, just keep, don't look you it in his gotta, eyes, okay? You just got to dress the same even like two years after you get the BBL. So one day people are like, wow, this whole time Baker Bell was hiding that ass there, from There us. was no way. You can't hide ass. You can't you hide can, ass. You can't hide can. ass that wasn't there no more. You got. I'd have to get like two BBLs just to like spread it out over like Right. Years, you like, would have to get half a BBL. Oh, like. No, I got a lot of plans. I don't want to even. I don't even want to give right, all my plans. you're not gonna tell. Me. Don't tell them. Cause don't I got some them. ideas. On okay. How to make it work. Cause but. we may. We may get some. Get a little bit. You can honestly. Once I transition to my auntie body, maybe I'm gonna just have a little light work. Auntie body. You know we get a new body at like 35. Mm. I'm not. I, listen, I'm. I don't have kids yet. I feel like the auntie body will come after a kid. After kids, definitely. But if you don't have kids, then 35, you're going to get the auntie body. I mm, want it then at that point. That's what they've been the telling us. I want the kids to bring the auntie body. I want, That's I want. what the older ladies keep telling me. Like, after a certain age, it's just my body was never the same. <laughs> And that's kind of where I'm I'm like in the early stages there because I'm looking at all these old pictures like I ain't never going to be skinny again. That's kind of crazy. I got something in the water. I don't know. I don't know. So I can't speak on that. But for the rest of y'all, yeah, like I feel that. I feel that for y'all. I'm, I'm curious to see what, what auntie body definitely. You're going to have like. an auntie body. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm optimistic. I didn't. You know what? If I could have told myself 10 years ago that I would still be this small. I'm like, shit, I did not see this coming. Like, right. I did not see this. I thought I was going to be tall <laughs> so and thick, tall and thick, and... <sighs> it's coming. It's coming. Here it's we is. coming. Here we it's is. coming, Baker Bear. We're working on it. Remember this point. Um, for the rest of the year still ahead of us, we're rolling into summer. Do you have any specific plans for yourself that you got planned that you can share? Um, Beyond the deluxe. We, are, we got the deluxe. I do want to do one more video for Most Wanted. Um, before I move on, I feel like I feel like most one was just so special just because we didn't intend to for it to come together like it did. Okay. So I do want to give um, most one one more moment. I'm not gonna lie, like I say, I'm going on vacation for the first time. This Where's Becca? Do you want to tell us? Uh, I'm going to Greece. Greece? You're going to Santorini with one of the long dresses on the hill? Santorini on the water. Okay. Yes, I manifested that. Love I'm that. going to Santorini uh, this summer. And then I want to take my grandparents to New York because they've never been. Sweet. So, um, and then I'll be 
working on new music, obviously, which means I'll be in a studio. I want so you to do, I want you to do some music in Greece. Like I want to see how that inspires you. Yeah, I'm not sound, working what, in like, Greece. What would that sound like? Niggas, I was something. trying to get. You see how niggas be trying to get me to go in the studio? I'm <laughs> a sucker for inspiration. Every time like, I get anywhere, they're like, place. you know what would be great right now? The studio, like just yeah, like just say we are on a boat is. in Jamaica. I'm not finna make no music. So somebody else said this too, then, huh? Okay, but all right. Everywhere so I just, we go, niggas be like, let's hit the studio. Why? How about this? At the very least, <laughs> what's up there on paper? Because that's like an inspiring thing you said. Like, now take I'm gonna your, take, I'm gonna take like a little, a little setup, like a little mic, and just, yeah, I'm just put record something. some ideas, or just write some things out. Just because I think that those experiences are special. Like you said, you only can do something for the first yeah, time once. Right, like, right. Capturing those experiences. I do really like good. to record. I usually do it on my phone. Honestly, yeah. I record songs on my phone when I'm like out in nature did any of most wanted end up on your phone did it start on your phone uh no okay well, streets actually did really yeah. streets started the beat started off as just all my vocals i want to i'd um, like to hear the voice of if you ever if you ever just want to share that find you got it. It. I, i'll see if i can find it for you that's but yeah fine. that definitely started off like that in the meantime where can we follow you where can we love you send you love send you and like, everything else uh john doe on instagram j-e-a-n-d-e-a-u-x Pronounce like Parmesan. Tell them not Jean, not Jane. Do um, they still? Do they still mess it up? They still do. Uh, you know it's crazy. I was just in uh, Houston, and this white girl came to me, and she kept calling me Jean. Jean Doe. And my brother was like, "It's John," and she was like, "It feels like Jean though." Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I say, girl, I feel Ooh. like I should smack the yeah, shit out of you. Yeah, it feel like you should back the fuck up. How about that? <laughs> fuck is wrong with you? It feels like you should get the fuck away from me. Nah, people still do that. But yeah, John Doe on Instagram, John Doe Music on Twitter, um, John Doe on YouTube, all that. Straight like that. And you said you got one more visual with this project. Are you looking for any other video vixens? Mm, I could use a bacon bear one time. Man, I got to practice. I got to practice being a video vixen. I really only got They like don't know you got that it. dump truck. That's the crazy thing. Yeah, I, that ain't, I ain't even going to stand up. Cause I gotta, <laughs> listen, now I got to beat the BBL allegations. I got to start hiding my ass. Right. So when I show up with ass, I'm maybe telling you, up they will them. never know. Me, we just saw or said earlier how stupid men are. They will never know. They gonna know, and I need I, I, I need them not to know. It's like if I could conceal the they, ass. If for you a tell bit. them I just wear a lot of bag like baggy clothes, they're gonna want to believe it for the fantasy. They gonna be like, oh, it's true. I'm a sneak ass, y'all. You will sneak a little sneak ass. Up, up. I'm gonna just sneak ass. Sneak a couple dude, cheeks dude, out. Surprise his ass. <laughs> <laughs> Straight like that. You can watch the rest of this interview on my social media at little bacon bear at little bacon bear Appreciate you, sis. Uh huh, honey.